Hello everyone, so this is the Scientific Visualization Studio page from NASA. This is a visualization that they put together of both the 2023 and 2024 solar eclipses. Not only that, they've shared all of the data sets. So if you scroll down here, you can see, you can download the eclipse data for both of these years. And right here, I'm gonna be using, um, I'm essentially gonna be animating this solar eclipse path of totality for 2024. I'm gonna be using Adobe After Effects with a premium extension called GeoLayers 3. If you don't know about this tool, I'll link to it in the video description uh, if you wanna go check it out. And I'm also gonna link to this particular page where you can come get this. So we need to download the KML. So it comes in a shape file format, KML, and then there's this JSON over here. I'm just gonna grab the KML for 2024. And take note, because just below here, we have descriptions of everything that's gonna be included here. Mainly, I'm gonna be mapping out what's called the umbras here. These are the shadows. Essentially, when we look up at this visualization here, it's all of these ellipses here. So we're gonna animate it like moving along its path there. I've got GeoLayers 3 open. I'm gonna create a new map comp, 45 seconds. I'll just grab this super sweet satellite profile. All right, I've got the data set folder right here on my local drive. I'm gonna open this up. Now be aware, some of these layers are a little too large, at least for my system here. I couldn't import uh, one or two of these layers. I think it was Umbra High. So just be aware of that. And, and be aware in general, this is kind of a, really advanced project that I'm gonna be putting together here. It was very intensive on my system, so I'm sure for a lot of you out there, um, it's going to be intensive on your system, like very processor intensive. So just be ready to wait around for a bit. You're gonna see here. So the first thing I wanna do is grab this center line and drag it and drop it directly in here. And now we can see a preview of it. I'm gonna double click to zoom in on it. And I'm just actually gonna draw this out. So I'll select the map feature here and then I'm gonna go up to the layer styles and I'm gonna create a new style by hitting this plus icon and we'll call it uh, center line. And I'm gonna turn off the fill. We just wanna have a stroke element here and we want the opacity to be a little bit lower. We want the width to be quite low and we also want it to be dashed. So we want it to be um, maybe like medium dashes and then we want the dash speed to be I think like maybe 30, we can always change this. So now I will apply this. I'm gonna click on this again and you have these four checkboxes down here. These are very important with how your shape is gonna be drawn out. So everything looks good here. And now with this selected, I'm gonna go ahead and draw our center line out. And here we go, we have our new line. Let's just take a quick little preview here. Okay, and it is actually going in the right direction. I wasn't sure if that was gonna work first try, but it is going from Mexico up toward Canada, which is the correct path. I'm gonna click on my map settings here and I just wanna turn off my labels. Now I'll go back and I'm going to grab, let's see what else do we got here. I'm gonna grab the actual U path high. Let's see what this is. I'm gonna grab this, drag it over here. And I'm just gonna draw this out. You can see this is a shape with like a stroke and a fill. So I'm gonna create a new layer style again. We'll do a fill with, um, we're gonna do a fill of really, really low opacity, like something like that. We'll do a stroke with an opacity in the 50s, a width very, very thin. Go ahead and click apply, and I'll draw this out now. I'm doing this very quickly because I don't want this tutorial to be like 10 hours long, and we can always tweak these a little bit later. Okay, let me change this a little bit. I'll just edit this style and I'll bring the width of this down even further. And now with this layer selected, you can just swap this out. Okay, that's looking pretty cool. Now I'm going to draw out the actual shadow or what's called the umbra. And this comes in, if I bring this data feature in, um, you'll see right here, I have umbra low and umbra high. And if you go back to NASA's website, you'll see that this is the resolution basically meaning they're, it's different time intervals. So the high one is gonna give you more polygons. It's a polygon at uh, one second intervals, whereas the low is at 10 second intervals. So I'm gonna go ahead and go with the low, in fact, because Umbra High wouldn't even upload. So if I just grab this, bring it in, now is the moment where we need to be patient because this is a lot. Okay, so if I double click here, you can see we have this huge line and it looks like a solid line, but if I open this up, 
and I just click on one of the features, I click on a couple other ones, you'll notice that as I click on these, you're seeing the actual shadow of the moon here. That's what that is. And this is like an individual ellipse of, of the shadow of the moon here. And this just goes every 10 seconds, it gives you another individual polygon. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna draw out all of these, not all of them, but the ones that go over land, and then we're going to animate them, kind of sequence them. And I'm gonna show you how to do that. The big barrier or problem we're gonna run into now is drawing out all these shapes. Now we wanna be efficient here. We don't wanna draw out all the shapes because it's gonna be way too intensive on our system. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna zoom in here and I want to basically have my shadow animate right across land. So right when it kind of enters Mexico here and when it goes up to Canada here. So a good way to do this is first, I wanna rename my features so I can see them but because right now they're just called feature. So if I click on feature properties, I can actually rename them. It says right here, name features by auto. If I click on this, it's gonna give me a list of all the different data fields here. And I wanna use UTC time or seconds. Let's go with seconds and see what that does. I'm gonna click apply. Okay, so this has given us seconds here. Now what I wanna do is I'm gonna scroll way down and start to click and see if I can find randomly um, if I can find polygons here we go okay this polygon starting to show up so we want to find this first polygon here where it's right you know entering the land of Mexico so let's say we want to go right here 65,200 okay that'll be our starting now we're gonna find the last polygon and actually I know that I don't even want any of these other polygons uh, or features. So I'm just going to go ahead and delete them. I can always import them later, but I, I just want to get rid of them. So I'm going to shift click, grab all these other ones, and just delete them so I don't even have to worry about accidentally drawing them. Now I'm going to scroll all the way down here and start to look for our end position, which is going to be somewhere up here. All right, let's just say right here 71,000 looks good to me. So now, same, I'm going to delete. All of the end ones here, keep it all nice and neat. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go up to layer styles and I'm gonna grab a solid white. This doesn't really matter, actually solid white. No, I'm gonna grab, I'm gonna just gonna create a new layer here and we're gonna do new style. We'll do um, Umbra and I'll just make this solid black. Doesn't really matter, once again, I can change these a little bit later. But we need to be careful now because we're gonna draw out all these shapes and it's gonna be, once again, it's gonna be pretty intense. Now for this, we want to think about this before we do it because we want to basically pre-compose this in its own, you know, we want to have it in its own composition. So to do this, I'm basically going to go up here to the map comp settings and create a new comp, which I will call Umbra or Shadow. And this is fine, 45 seconds. We want to make sure that it's linked with the world comp so that as we move the world comp, this is going to move with it. I'll click next. It doesn't really matter for the imagery profile here uh, because I'm gonna be turning that off just so we can see the, sh the shape, the shapes only. All right, you can see the new comp down here in the timeline, you can see the new imagery. So I need to go back up to my map comp settings and right here for our new Umbra, you can see it's linked right here. I'm gonna turn off the imagery by clicking on this little icon right here and I'm gonna turn off the labels as well. And now I'm actually gonna select it. You can see now I've got this right here. Now what I wanna do is go grab the layer style that I just created here, and it's very, very important that I wanna draw it inside of this new map comp, so to pre-comp it inside of there. Pre-comping is a little weird in geo layers. It's one of the big obstacles. This is how you pre-comp. You do inside map comp. And we also wanna make sure we simplify the geometry as much as possible, which is current zoom, that's good. And it's also very important that these are individual layers. They have to be individual layers. All right, now is the time intensive super processor intensive part. So I suggest you save your project right now, you clear your cache, you get ready to wait around and keep your fingers crossed. So I'm gonna grab all of my features here by just manually clicking the first one and then grabbing all these down here. Um, be careful if you select a feature collection, it can draw these out oddly, so you, I like to grab all of the individual features. You can see in my preview here that I have them all. Now I need to make sure that, I, once again, I double check that it's drawing inside the map comp. I have the correct layer style selected and I have the correct 
map comp that I want to draw these in selected. Now I'll click on this little pin icon down here, draw features. Um, by the way, GeoLayers does have this really cool draw with time offset feature, but I'm not gonna be getting into that right now. We're gonna be manually sequencing these. So I'm gonna click on draw features and it's gonna give us a warning like, hey, this is a lot of vertices, 13,000 vertices. You sure you wanna do that? 581 features. Yeah, that's fine. Go ahead and click OK, and now we're going to wait around. This is a very good time to mention that I've actually been creating a bunch of solar eclipse maps over at Felt. I'm going to link to a couple of those tutorials that I put together. I was doing some pretty uh, in-depth static map tutorials showing you how to do like categorical maps, show the duration of the totality, as well as mapping out these individual umbras and five minute intervals. So I will link to those down in the video description as well. There's a lot of cool stuff that you can learn from those tutorials. So be sure to subscribe to Felt as well. That's where I work full time. All right, it has successfully drawn out all these shapes. You can see the frame render time down here is now substantially longer. So the first thing you need to do is jump into your pre comp here and then basically grab all of these layers and turn the visibility off. This is going to take the load off of your computer very quickly. So now we need to wait, like right now, it's really bogging down my system, so I'm just like letting it load, and hopefully this will not, <laughs> this will not crash your system. See, it's taking just a, a, quite a bit of time to actually load this, and when it does, I'm gonna hit that visibility key, that eyeball key on the left to turn all of these off, and then we'll basically be in the clear after that. All right, so that took a good like 30 seconds to load that. Now I'm gonna click on the eyeball icon once and then stop because you don't wanna crash. That's the one thing you don't wanna do is just click a bunch, click, 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 click. You don't wanna do, oh my God. Woo, thought I was gonna crash. Okay, so I've turned off all the shapes here. Now what I wanna do is I'm going to sequence these layers. So I can't stress enough how important it is to turn the visibility off of these layers. If you don't do it, you're not gonna be able to really do much of anything aside from crash after effects. Now, I'm going to move my playhead to the beginning here and with all these layers selected, you can scroll down and see that I have indeed over 500 layers. I'm going to hold the Alt key and then hit right bracket. What that did is it trimmed all of these layers down to one frame. And now that we have all these trimmed down, I'm gonna deselect and we're gonna sequence these. And it's important, the order in which you grab your layers, it's, it will sequence them in that order. So I'm gonna scroll down to the bottom, we wanna grab the lowest number first, and then I'll scroll back up, hold shift, grab your last layer. Now we go to animation, keyframe assistant, and select sequence layers, and then don't touch anything, we don't want any overlap, we're just gonna click OK, and now as I zoom out, you're gonna see what that did. It essentially sequenced all these layers. As I scroll down, you can see it um, sequenced them in that particular order. And now I can turn the visibility of these back on and I don't have to worry about it bogging down my system because only one of these shapes is gonna be visible at one time on screen. If I turn on transparency and play this back, now you're gonna see we have our little umbras moving across screen here. So if I kind of shuttle over here, you can see that our last frame is over here. I'm going to like add a marker here, or we can just see it's 2405. And if I go back to my main comp, um, I will add a marker right here so that we know that, or we could trim our comp back. Now I'm almost done. I mean, I have an animation right here. The problem is I don't want it to be 24 seconds in length. I want it to be much faster. Let's say we want to have like a five or 10 second animation and maybe we want to make it, you know, just a little snappier. So we can do that by grabbing our pre-comp here, just right clicking it and then going to time and select enable time remapping. And then that'll add some keyframes here, one at the beginning, one at the end. Drag your playhead over to this marker and just add another keyframe right here. And what that's gonna do is we'll essentially allow us to retime it. Now I can grab this and start to speed it up. So if we want, I'm actually gonna delete this end keyframe. And I can take my playhead to around the five second mark, drag my end keyframe here, and now we have a five second animation of our Umbra moving much faster now. And another thing we could do is we could alt click this 
and then just type in uh, loop out right there. And now we'll have an infinite loop of our umber path here. Okay, that's really the gist of it. That's the bulk of this tutorial. Now it's just a matter of tweaking everything to make it look how you want it to look, like stylistic things. For example, I'm gonna go over to Window and grab um, the Effects and Presets panel, and then I'm gonna search for Drop Shadow, and I'm gonna drag the Drop Shadow and place it on our Umbra here. And now what you can do is you can say Shadow Only, and now it'll give you a little shadow of the moon. We can do distance uh, a zero and then just start to bump the softness way up. Maybe bring the opacity all the way up. Again, this is however you want it to look. Now I'll bring the opacity down to like 75. Nothing scientific about this, folks. And now what's cool about this is of course the fact that I can start to change the pitch and the bearing of my map here and everything is going to follow along. I'm going to go back and grab the world map comp. And if I zoom in here, I can actually animate to, you know, if I want to like fly along with the path totality, do whatever I want to do, GeoLayers is going to make this simple, simple. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, I urge you to go check out my work over on Felt. We did a lot of solar eclipse tutorial content over there. So if you head over to Felt Maps on YouTube, I'll link all that in the video description. Be sure to subscribe to that channel as well because it's just mapping cool madness all the time. And as always, if you're a hardcore map person, if you really want to go deep on GeoLayers 3, I have a GeoLayers 3 masterclass and uh, I have a Patreon page and all that. You can find all the information down in the video description for that. I will see you on the next episode of Monday Maps.